right. All right. Welcome. We're back. Welcome. Yay. Welcome to Inclusion Done Right. Number nine. Number nine. keep them all nine. straight. Number nine. Nine. <laughs> nine. That's right. Number nine. Nine. So, yeah. It feels like, like we haven't done this in a while, but well, that's only because we had break in between. We did have spring yeah, break, spring. and we're like... Recovering. Recovering <laughs> from spring break, and this this week, actually, it's going to air on Wednesday, hopefully, maybe mm-hmm. Thursday, but hopefully Wednesday, mm-hmm. if everything works well. We have, we have um, um, Ethan oh, that is doing, right. so that's this week. That's right. So, yeah. because we had Ethan, yep. we are having a special visitor today, and Yay. that is Ms. Danielle Cummings. She is with welcome. the Arizona, <laughs> yeah, welcome. Do She's with the birthday? Arizona School for the Deaf and Blind. Mm-hmm. So I'll let you. She is. And so um, what we've done here at Coyote and actually at Humboldt Unified School District mm-hmm. is develop cluster sites um, for partnerships with Air, the Arizona School of Deaf and Blind so that we can really take full advantage of all the resources at one campus mm-hmm. to best serve all of the kids. So it's been a really exciting process. Um, this is actually only our second year. Can you believe I that? I can't believe it's only the second year. I know. Especially with as many years as we talked about it. It took a while to get yep. it going. Yep. But how incredible it's been for our students to be able to have um, peers mm-hmm. at school when they normally wouldn't have. Right. And it saves our teachers a lot of driving. Yep. So yep. We're, it's, a, it's a win-win. It really has been. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's it sparked again so much opportunity for all of our kids mm-hmm. to embrace diversity mm-hmm. again. I, yes, and I know Joe, my one of my typical children. <laughs> I have to label them. <laughs> I tell you, he's typical. I'm sorry, but okay. So Joe is in sixth grade, mm-hmm. and he has a, had a few peers who have visual impairments mm-hmm. in his class, and yep. he last year was very impressed with the screens they had and it was just really neat he would talk about them and and actually in a lot of his conversations um i wouldn't know he was talking about someone with a Mm -hmm. a disability he was just talking to them about them like he would any of his other friends Mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's been it's been an exciting partnership to watch that transformation happen um, with with our entire community, our kids, our staff mm-hmm. as well, mm-hmm. helping to get them on board and get them the training and supports they need because that can be a challenge, as we've talked about before, mm-hmm. having many adults in the classroom, yeah. interpreters, um, the technology that supports. Mm-hmm. So it, I, I'm with you. I can't believe we've only been doing this for two years yeah. because I feel like we're pretty dialed in. Yeah, it's been great. It's mm-hmm. been really cool. So we're really cool. So we're that. excited. So ha- you ladies came back from your break. I'm sure you're all well rested. <laughs> I myself get to breathe during the day now. <laughs> yeah, parents are like, woohoo! And we were like, today, I'm like, oh my gosh, is yeah. this day over? <laughs> because I need to build my stamina back up because it's right. been a nice time off. But so, Danielle, tell us just a little bit about kind of how we got to this point and um, what it looks like for our kids. So with the partnership program, um, all of our teachers through the School for the Deaf and Blind that are not on a campus program, which we do have two campus programs. We have a program for deaf students in Phoenix, and then we have a program for blind and deaf students in Tucson that's a boarding program. Um, For all the other students, there's about 2,000 in Arizona. All of those teachers are itinerant, meaning that they go to the kids and have to travel to the schools. So when we have to do that, and we're short teachers, as everyone is, we're even more short being having a specialty of teaching Braille, having to drive out separately and teach the same lesson to two kids that are 45 Mm -hmm. minutes away, it's frustrating because Mm -hmm. you know that those two kids could really interact together, they could have lessons together, they could learn from each other, and it would enhance the whole school. So having um, our students here, we have about 10 students now that come from different districts. So Mm -hmm. Candace opened her doors. Uh, The other schools haven't had as big of an impact as um, the elementary school has. So it's been a real blessing to be able to have Candace say, yes, we'll take them in because as we know, Prescott Valley's growing. It's it's a big right. ask to say, hey, we want more kids to come right. here. <laughs> and on top of that, from other districts, it's also a really big ask for the other districts because they're saying they are going to give up that child from right. their enrollment right. into right. another district's right. enrollment. So really, 
to me that meant that they were really thinking of the students first. Mm -hmm. And that meant a lot. Mm -hmm. It meant a lot that Prescott agreed to that, that Chino Valley agreed mm -hmm. to that, that Ash Fork agreed to that, Mayor. Um, it really said, we are here for yep. the kids. Yep. And it's not about money, it's about the students. So that yes. really made me feel good yep. that we got all of those yep. on board. They were hands down, no problem. Oh, so good. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, good. I mean, like we've talked about, but it's the whole community piece. You right. Know, that it takes, that takes everyone in the community to buy into the students' needs mm -hmm. and put that at the forefront of every decision that we make. Right. And so that just shows that mm -hmm. we do have that community that yeah. truly does care. Yeah. So we have a Braille Production Center right here at we Coyote know. Springs. Um, it's very loud. You can hear it most of the time. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we can produce Braille um, on the spot, real time, and it means a lot. We also ship it out from here uh, electronically mostly. We don't do any like physical shipping of Braille, but um, we do some electronic mm -hmm. transfers. Um, but it allows us to have Braille here on staff that we can then um, have used other places, but we ha right. can have them here and have access to them here. So mm -hmm. it, it really is, is incredible. So mm -hmm. thanks for that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's pretty neat. It is, it is pretty neat. So, so um, you did give us a few questions mm -hmm. that, that, you know, having, I'm not familiar with, with mm -hmm. hearing and visual impairments aside from ASL and um, with Jillian, but um, so one of the questions was, what should a parent do if a child fails his vision or, oh, or hearing screening? Yeah, and this is something that I think almost every parent faces at some point. Most people think visual impairment, they think glasses. Um, and actually, when we step in, it's when the glasses are still not a full correction. Mm -hmm. So we don't even step in at that point, but it's the parent's part at that point and for hearing, there's a lot of laws associated around how many times you have to get tested because we have an audiologist that will come mm -hmm. if they fail. Vision doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. So it's really up to the parents to follow mm -hmm. through. So let me go through the process because um, this is a question I get almost, sure. you know, mm -hmm. all, all, anytime I go to a school. The nurse does a test and it's pretty basic. It's probably, um, maybe about the same as what you would get at a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference is, is the lighting. Lighting is huge for visual impairments, obviously, just like for um, audio testing. Sound around the, um, you know, the, right. the sound in the building is gonna make a big difference. Uh, for the vision testing, the nurse does their screening, just like you would get at the pediatrician. But sometimes our kids at this point aren't going as regularly to the pediatrician. Mm -hmm. So they may, and some pediatricians miss that test. Oh, they, they passed a couple years before, so they don't need to do it again. Yeah. We see a lot of that, and there's a lot of then missed uh, potential prescriptions that, you know, glasses could just fix just a little error that could help your child with mm -hmm. reading. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's hard because we can't do that initial mm -hmm. test. So if they fail, you get the little note that goes home. Mm -hmm. All it says is, Take your child to the eye doctor and bring it back. Yep. But that's up to you then. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no real, there's mm -hmm. not a lot of follow up with right. that either. Right. Because by law, there isn't, they don't have yeah. to be. Yeah. So, um, what we normally recommend if we get a question about that is uh, check with your insurance company. Most insurance takes one full eye exam from an ophthalmologist mm -hmm. a year. And most parents don't even use that. Hmm. Oh. So you can go ahead and get that full health checkup. Uh, we recommend in town here, m and Eye Institute mm -hmm. has okay. a fantastic practice with very, very well-trained um, ophthalmologists and optometrists. And the ophthalmologist looks at the health of the eye. Mm -hmm. So I know we're not just talking about kids with other disabilities, but if we were to talk about a child with additional disabilities, the percentage is 80% of kids with an dis additional disabilities have a visual impairment. So we can pretty much guess that a lot of those are undiagnosed. Wow. And a lot of it's because sometimes they can't communicate with yeah. us. They can't tell us that looks fuzzy. They don't have the words yeah. to describe it. Or if they're not reading, um, or if they're delayed reading, we're not knowing why exactly. And sometimes that eye exam is just one more doctor to go see. 
So I would really encourage you, if you can, make it go along with another visit. If you're going down to Phoenix for your specialist, make an appointment with the eye specialist as well, because it's worth just if you can, yep. if you get it covered on your insurance, just do it once mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. And if you're all clear, you could probably skip mm -hmm. that. They'll tell you, we can come back in three years. Mm -hmm. If they're nonverbal, they may say come back in a year, because there's no way for them to say this hurts. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, right. They may poke at something and it, th they don't know it's their eye that's hurting. Mm -hmm. There may be a pressure issue that we that we wouldn't know about. Sure. Mm -hmm. So doing that eye test is so important. Going to an optometrist, which is what you see most of the time and like nationwide, actually right. probably will have an optometrist mm -hmm. and an op mm -hmm. ophthalmologist. Um, Walmart has an mm -hmm. optometrist. Mm -hmm. That's the OD. So they're not a medical doctor. They, they do the glasses prescription. Mm -hmm. And they do fantastic jobs at getting great prescriptions for kids and adults. Mm -hmm. But for the health of the eye and the check for the overall health and wellness, you would want to see an ophthalmologist. Wow, okay. that's awesome. That's a really good description. So with that failed, you go and you take it and they do an all clear? Or do they say, hey, we could give your child a prescription? get the glasses, and I definitely recommend Walmart, uh, because you can go to any doctor and just take the prescription to Walmart. And you know, a lot of places do it online now, um, but you do need some measurements. Mm -hmm. So you can see, you know, you're out shopping at Walmart, just go in there, you give them their, your prescription, $39 for kids. They wow. repair the glasses for free for a year. Wow. And believe me, my son's done some damage <laughs> to his glasses. Yep. And while I'm shopping, they're being fixed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's convenient, cool. very convenient. It really is, and they have a great selection of frames for $39, and that's the whole package, that's everything, the fixing, and you know, other places it's additional to get the mm -hmm. repairs and all of that. Sure. So for children, it just makes so much sense to go with that nice package, and it's right there, and it's very convenient. Right. Um, sometimes they want fancier frames, it adds like another $10 or something, mm -hmm. but if you can talk them into the, to the, <laughs> to this the, is the yeah, this you're is the section. Don't go beyond yeah. this. <laughs> No, because when they do come to school, right. and, things and, happen. And then also, then you can you can afford a second pair at thirty nine dollars mm -hmm. sometimes. And right. So you can you know it's actually usually cheaper than what your insurance will provide to you. Yeah. So um, and they'll check for you if if it's cheaper with your insurance or the thirty nine dollar package. Mm -hmm. So after that point, if the doctor then says, "Oh, well now we've got something to look at," that's when ASTB will step in. And so then we do a whole other set of testing, surprising, <laughs> more testing, but we look at how the child's actually functioning in the classroom. Because, surprise, the lighting in the eye doctor's yeah. office is way different than in the classroom, mm -hmm. and you turn on an overhead projector yep. and you turn off the lights, or you turn on the lights and you do something on the board, glare from the windows, all of these things changes the way we see right. anybody sees mm -hmm. um, and functions mm -hmm. in a, a different environments. So we look at all of those factors and then decide, does that child then need services in addition to whatever correction the doctor has specified? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, of course, that's when we step in with possibly even some breath. Like mm -hmm. we have some students mm -hmm. at Coyote with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. like Ethan. Yeah. Ethan had that. <laughs> I heard an odd sound from that direction. So I want to make sure it's not we're my phone. Sure. Okay. <laughs> make sure we're still recording. I want to make recording. sure we're still recording. Make sure it's just Daisy. Because it's a new, it is a, we are still recording. All right. So, and Daisy.